Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's uh, online event. We've got, uh, I'm really, really happy to be here this evening with Julian Morgan, the newly appointed principal at Devizes School. And uh, we're coming to you online because uh, of obviously COVID restrictions that are, that are all affecting all our lives. And we're going to try something new this evening, which is our virtual online open evening. Julian, great to see you. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Good to, it's really good to be here. Strange good circumstances and a strange way of doing things, but great to see you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, newly appointed, but I'm sure you've definitely got your feet under the table right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all the team are kind of around you and starting an, uh, an exciting, a very different kind of year. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, I mean, we've, made a, we've had a fun, fantastic start to this year. Um, we've, got, we've, got a, we've got a fantastic team of, of staff here, and that's the cornerstone of everything we do at Devise. It's a great, a great set of staff. And you'll get the opportunity tonight to be introduced to some of those staff so they can talk to you about what we do and how we do it. Um, and you'll, you'll have the opportunity also to the chat uh, uh, function to ask us a few questions. And hopefully, we'll begin to replicate and be able to replicate something of what we do in a normal open evening. It is a, it is a little bit different. Um, we know that the, the decisions that you make um, taking young people into, an, an, into secondary school and deciding what school they go to is a really important decision. I've got three, um, three daughters myself. Um, two of them are still in secondary school. One of them's left secondary school. But I know how difficult uh, it was for my wife and I to choose that secondary school and the experience we went through to make sure we made the right choice. We also empathise and understand that to do that in this, at this time is, is even more challenging. So our job tonight is to allow you to understand our school, to tell you a bit about ourselves and, and just to get you to meet us. And we sort of looked at different ways of doing that and we thought this is a really good introduction so you could, uh, you could get to sort of meet us as face to face as it can be at the moment. Yeah, so it's, it's wonderful to be part of this and hosting. So obviously, Julian, we've got yourself. We've also got Claire Snelson, who's the Raising Achieving um, Leader for Year 7. We've got Tom Strickland, who's Head of Faculty for Global Studies. And we've also got Rachel Edwards as well, Head of Faculty, Technology, Enterprise and Design. So uh, a lovely kind of group of people that gives a breadth of, of devices school. But I suppose the first question for this evening, Julian, and, uh, and, and what I'm sure all all our audience this evening, which we've got a big audience, which is great. You know, we're going to hopefully um, a lot of people really interested to talk about the school. But what makes Devizes School special? The school itself is a, is a really is a really special place for, for a number of reasons. At the heart of this school are the students. Um, I, I, I tweeted a photo a while ago of the school just before we all came back. And it was a photo of the beautiful quads. We've got, a beautiful, we've got beautiful buildings, but none of that means anything unless we've got our students. And the last few weeks, the schools, it's just come alive with a vibrancy. And the, the, the key message, I think, is the purpose of the, it seems an obvious message, but the purpose of this school is to serve the young people in our care. And that's, that's, that's fundamentally what we do. We all have a passion for what we do. I have a very clear view about teachers, that um, to be a teacher of an individual subject, you need to have that passion. Um, otherwise, you shouldn't do that role. And I think that sort of passion for learning and passion for young people's outcomes and their happiness, that's really, really important. We, we focus what we do around sort of core values of courage, pride, resilience, um, kind, kind, kindness, cheerfulness and trust. And, and they're really important for us, especially kindness at the moment, actually, because we, we test those values with everything that we do. We put those values at the heart of everything we do, and that is really the spirit of what we do every day. So for us, that's really, really important. We offer, uh, I suppose, a, a, a curriculum which is broad and balanced, and you'll have the opportunity to listen to some colleagues a little bit later on who will tell you about that, that balanced curriculum um, and what we do and the opportunities. It was great um, after school today, after we'd said goodbye to some youngsters, I was able to walk around the site and see a range of uh, youngsters involved in extracurricular activity. I was sort of amazed at the shop putting all sorts of stuff that people were doing and we're sort of getting back to that normality we've, we've spent a period of time focusing on safety and processes and making sure that the school is safer today than it was yesterday that's really important to us but fundamentally is impo important is making sure that young people thrive and that they learn and we're really sort of back into that now which is which is great and so, so tell me, you know, so if I'm going to send my child to devise this school and, and you know, and, and I, I listen to everything this evening and I hear about the extracurricular activities and the curriculum and the members of the faculty. But what is it that's really going to make sure that my child flourishes at, at your school? 
And the, the key point for us is making sure that ch ch children here are, are recognised and understood and known as, as individuals. It seems like an obvious thing to say in, in, in schools, but having the, having the child at the heart of everything that we do is, 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 the, is the cornerstone, really. Those, sort of, those core values are, are really in, in, important. If you, if you think about that idea of, um, of cheerfulness, for example, it's really important to us. We, 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 we talk to staff about having a contractual obligation to be cheerful and engaging and, and, and really caring about the, the, the young people in their care. Um, and, and being a, a family, if you like, really. The Year 7 team's really close. There's a really clear structure in terms of the pastoral team within Year 7, and we'll um, tell you more about that a little bit later. But they are genuinely a nurturing, a nurturing team. Nobody can thrive academically unless they're safe, unless they're secure, unless we know them and we know how to make them excel. Um, schools often make that mistake of throw, becoming sort of a, um, a, a centre just focusing on... on um, on that aspect, not understanding young people and understanding they flourish when we know them, they flourish when we care about them, uh, and they flourish when we invest time in them. That's, that's really important. All right, so it's that, that, that pastoral piece around there that's really going to... Okay, and and that's, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, because, you know, you've got kids, I've got kids, they are the most precious thing in your life, despite sometimes they drive you crazy. But, you know, like, and, and you do want, like you said, you don't want them just to be put into this factory where they're kind of belt fed information as exam fodder. What you really want is an environment that they're going to develop as a, as a person. They're going to develop their personalities. And, um, and, and I think, I think it's great to hear that the device is, is actually offers that as part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Julian, we've got you coming back later on for our Q&A, which we're going to pick up on, obviously, some questions from our audience this evening. Uh, for all those lovely people that have joined us this evening, you'll see a button uh, down at the bottom that says ask a question. Um, you can uh, enter one of the questions there. Obviously, we've, we, we've only got a certain amount of time this evening, so I'll try and pick the ones um, that we can to get them across to Julian, or you can vote questions up and down on the list. But Julian, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. And I'll look forward to catching up with you again uh, shortly. Thank you, Ray. Right, so next we've got uh, Claire Snelson, who'll be joining us. And uh, hi, Claire, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Very good. Uh, and thanks a lot for giving some of your time this evening. Claire, could you, just for the audience, could you tell, tell, tell them a little bit more about your role and what you do at Devizes School? Yeah, so my name's Claire Snelson. I'm the Raising Achievement Leader for Year 7. So coordinate the transition activities from Year 6 into Year 7, um, oversee behaviour and the general pastoral care of our Year 7 students. Lovely. Well, it sounds, like, it sounds like you have an important job there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if I'm going to send my child to um, to Devizes School and they're going to be starting in Year Seven, what tutor group are they going to be put in? How do you, how do you choose that for them? Yeah, it's a good question. So we start off with having our fantastic relationships with our feeder primary school. So we start that from quite early on. We do our Year Five taster days. We do a road show. We go out and visit the students. Um, quite early on in year six and actually in year five. Um, so first of all, I think the most important thing is that we've got that great communication with our primary schools. So we use the knowledge that the primary schools give us to place our students into tutor groups. Um, we take sort of friendship basis. We take who would work well with who. And we also match them um, to, our, to our tutors, our form tutors in year seven as well. So we, have a, we try and do a genuine mix so of new friends and so that students can make new friends and also their current friends as well. And so, our tutors are, sorry, our tutors are chosen especially because they are kind. So we choose them on the nurturing basis. And also, which I think is really important at Devizes School that doesn't happen at a lot of schools, is that our students will stay with their form tutor all, all throughout their time at Devizes. So they get that really pastoral support from their form tutor every day. So they, they're spending 25 minutes a day with their form tutor. So it's important that their relationship is good, that there's trust, that they're kind. Um, and also our form tutors know their students really well. Yeah. And so, so, so you really, um, you know, where possible, you're, you're actually trying to understand the journey of the student prior to kind of coming onto site by basically asking people within their primary schools, tell me a bit more about them, helping you understand them before they turn up. So, so my child isn't going to just turn up and you're just going to look at them and go, you're, you're this person, you know. 
No, absolutely not. So, um, for example, this year, obviously, we weren't able to do our normal induction period. So myself and Rachel Goff, who is the pastoral leader, along with our SENCO, uh, Dan Radbourne, we went round and visited all of our feeder primary schools. So to reassure the students that, yes, it's different, but we were still offering that support sort of straight away for them. That's that's brilliant. That's great to hear. So um, Julian alluded to it a, a little bit earlier and we touched on that about the pastoral care. Can you just tell me, you know, what that looks like in a bit more detail? Yeah, so the, the pastoral is essentially the looking after the emotional and sort of social well-being of our students. So it's myself as the Raising Achievement Leader for Year 7. I work really closely with Mrs Goff, who's the pastoral leader. I'm also teaching, so Mrs Goff is a non-teaching member of staff, so she's sort of available all the time, right. um, yeah. unless she's in meetings and things like that. But she's available 99% of the time for if, if the students need her. Um, and we're also sort of follow, our students follow a tutor programme that's the same across the whole of year seven that really focuses on our school values, as um, Mr Morgan mentioned at the beginning, and following them through and not putting our students in a box sort of thing, as you mentioned, so they're not labelled straight away as they come in. They grow emotionally and socially throughout their journey with us at Devizes School. That's, that's, that's fantastic. But let's say that, you know, my child... Um, they, they need a bit of extra support, you know, they've got some additional needs. What sort of, you know, uh, how can you help them? Okay, so um, as I mentioned already, we work really closely with Dan Radbourne, who's our SENCO. So we speak on a regular basis with the SENCOs at primary schools as well. And we, I put that support in straight away. And um, what I would say is we had a student this year who was especially anxious about coming up to Devizes School, considering that he hadn't been here before. But, and obviously he was nervous when he arrived at the front gates, wasn't sure where to go. He'd been here in year six early on in the year, but didn't have the opportunity to come. And because he'd seen us doing our road shows, he said straight away, Miss Nelson, where do I go? And I was showing him where to go. And it was fantastic to see, actually, because at the end of the day, I saw Tom at the gates. And I said, Tom, how was your day? He said, I had the, be I had the fan most fantastic day. He was beaming. <laughs> he was loving it. And it's so nice to see them now. Um, and he was, this, what, he was a child who we work with um, Mr. Radbourne with as well. So obviously he was, had needs, which we've, we cater for and support him as well as we can and was obviously extremely anxious and it was just fantastic to see. Good. Uh, listen, that's, that, that, that's, that's really reassuring. I think that, that kind of whole piece, like you mentioned about the wraparound, about the pastoral care, about the, you know, the additional support if it's needed and having somebody there who's non-teaching 99% of the time and, and seeing, you know, knowing that the, you know, my child or students are going to have form tutors all the way through that's, that's going to, learn with them and grow with them I think is 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 great to hear that what I would say as well is it's a really um collaborative collaborative approach sorry and we all work really closely so we all the trust comes straight away from our primary schools and then it's myself Mrs Goff and Mr Radbourne giving that to our form tutors as well so everyone it's just a great team and it's everyone works collaboratively for our students Perfect. Claire, listen, I really appreciate your time this evening. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear, just understand, like I said, the, how the transition worked from your perspective, you know, and the fact that you go back to primary schools and you, you learn from, from their primary teachers and make sure you carry on those lessons through to secondary. I think that's admirable. So thank you m very much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Tom, how are you this evening? Good evening. Really good. Thank you. Right. Um, ladies and gents, this is Tom Strickland. He's the head of faculty for Global Studies. Uh, Tom, you know, when I went to school, there was no Global Studies. Um, so it'd be really great to hear a bit more about what is Global Studies. Well, Global Studies is, is almost a made up title by ourselves. Um, it's, it's about a, a family of subjects. So we're talking about history, geography, uh, religious studies, which we call philosophy and ethics here. Um, but also sociology and psychology at A-level. And what we do is we all work quite closely, but every single one of those um, subjects is taught by a subject specialist. So your son or daughter would be taught by a historian in history, for example. Right, OK. And, and, and so similar question to how I was kind of uh, asking Claire, you know, when my, 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 my son or daughter attends devices, how do you know which class to put them in? OK, um, it varies depending on the subject. 
If you're looking at subjects like English, maths, and science, they do actually set. So they will do baseline tests, and then they're, they're, students are always moving about depending on where they are with that in those subjects. Subjects like history um, and geography and so on, um, we have mixed ability sets. So everybody is, is jumbled up together. There's a couple of exceptions to that. We have a, a support group for students who need extra English and maths help alongside their subjects. And we also have like an accelerated uh, group for some of the really top highest achievers. But it's really important to note that, as we mentioned before, we really take the student as the center. So whatever class that the young person's in, the teacher will know all the students. And the quicker the teacher knows them, the better, because what we're really trying is to make sure that all the education is tailored to the individual. The, the child is the center. That's, that, that's, that's really interesting. So, and, and can you just... Tell me a little bit more about, you know, the practice of that. How, how do you put them at the centre? How do you kind of understand their, their wants and needs from, a, from an academic standpoint and the testing? Well, in a normal world, we can talk to the students, we interact with the students, and we can still do that. But also we can see their written work and interact with them through writing, particularly in, in subjects like history. You know, I can see their written answer. I can almost have a dialogue conversation with the student week in, week out through their exercise book and the work that they're doing. Um, so we're having a, a discussion, the young person and the teacher are having a discussion, whether that's sometimes orally through questioning, sometimes through written work, um, and obviously in different ways with the practical subjects. During this lockdown period um, that we've come out of, uh, thank goodness, and hopefully we stay out of, um, home learning has been a big thing. Can you tell me about Devise's approach to home learning and how much home learning uh, students get? Well, home learning is really, really important. Home learning is a way that students can get into the right habits and the right routines and, and learn how to do it on their own. And if you also think about it, they've got to get ready for these big exams at GCSE and A-level, and a lot of that has to be done on their own. We support them so much in schools, but they have to be able to take their foot away and get into the real world and be able to act on their own. And home learning is the sort of the way they learn how to do that and the way they can digest what's been happening at school and then they can articulate it and do things themselves and be self-regulating. So it's about habit forming. It's about them being independent. It's about them learning to be themselves. Um, and it's really, really, really important, I think, as a young person. I have a daughter who's just started year seven and she, she is struggling a bit with home learning. And, I'm, and I'm, in a way, I'm loving it because she's got to learn to be independent. She's got to go through that transition. I'm lucky that I know that, that, that the worry is there, so I don't have to get worried about it. But she's, she's got to crack it and it's really good for her. Yeah, I think I, I couldn't agree more. I think a love for learning, being able to learn independently, you know, opens up so many opportunities for, for, for individuals, you know, not just young people, for even myself, you know, that recognition, that ability now that if I've got a problem, I can go and solve it. And actually, I, I have the ability to apply myself to acquire that knowledge and then and use that knowledge, uh, you know, uh, for whatever resolution. I think it's absolutely great. Let's talk. So we talked a little bit about home learning. Tell me now. Uh, being part of obviously global studies, um, um, extracurricular activities, cultural activities. Do these go on at devices school? What do they Absolutely. look like? Well, there's a range of other things. There's all the normal sports stuff you'd, you'd expect. And we do quite a few at devices, unusual sports. We also do a lot of um, things like Duke of Edinburgh and the camping and all that sort of growth activities for young people. I mean, within global studies, because we're all about the real world and what's going on in the real world, um, and what's happened in the real world. We've got history trips to Berlin at A-level. We've got battlefield trips. In fact, there was a young man I was just talking to the other day, and he'd been, two years ago, he'd been on the battlefield trip with me. He was a year 10 student at the time. And his name was George, and his journey actually started much lower down the school. So in year eight, he'd done a war memorial project. He'd gone down to the war memorial, like all, all the students at the Rose School do. They take a name off the war memorial, but they, this name actually happened to be his great-great-uncle. And he'd got just completely in the world of this thing. And he, he'd done, he did reams and reams. He'd spoken to relatives. He'd gone online. And we'd helped him and pushed him. And he came out with the most amazing project. And then he was on the trip in year 10, and we took him to the place where his, his great-great-uncle was actually buried. And the, the, the moment he could put his little poppy cross on his grave, I mean, it connected it all. You know, oh. on holiday, and you see these cemeteries, 
why? What are they about? And it's, it's the big, it's the cultural experience, and it's the opportunity to take young people to do things they might not op or, or, or always have the opportunity to. I mean, I've taken people who've never been out of devices, a little bit of a generalisation, but you know, never been abroad, abroad, and all that sort of thing, and they get just so much cultural capital out of that. It's really, really important. That's fantastic, and I, you know, that's I, 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 I love that story that you just mentioned about the young man George, and and I think. The opportunity to be enriched, but also amongst your peer group and it, have those experiences must be, you know, must be absolutely great. So, listen, trip, top... trip, trips are one of the things that everyone remembers about school. Yeah. Now, if you if you make sure those are really, really purposeful trips, which we do and we spend a long time doing that and making sure they're safe and all that sort of thing, then they remember them forever. Yeah. Important. No, I, I, I think it, it does build from memories, and it's so true. But I do remember a lot of my school trips. It's, they're great. They're great. Well, listen, Tom, it's been wonderful to hear from you this evening. Thank you very much for kind of giving us an insight into global studies, and obviously that, that wonderful little anecdote. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much. So next we have... Rachel Edwards. Uh, Rachel is the Head of Faculty for Technology, Enterprise and Design. So TED Faculty, is it not, Rachel? Yep. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Uh, Rachel, if you just tell us a bit more about the uh, TED Faculty, that would be really helpful for this evening's audience. Sure, yeah. The um, TED Faculty is all about technological subjects. So we include things like IT and design technology but not just the TED faculty, there's the Kappa faculty um, and PE and health. So as a, a trio, if you like, we cover um, a drama and art and food and textiles and later on in school life, business studies. So we're all about the practical subjects, health and social care. So all of those subjects that perhaps students haven't had any or not very much experience of at primary school, they can come to Kappa and TED and PE and health and experience those different vocational roles. That, uh, so, I mean, and, that, and that's great to hear because uh, I know I know my daughter. She's particularly, you know, she, she she she's good at English. She's good at math, but actually, she's very practical and pragmatic in her approach. So, I guess what I'm hearing is that the device school. There's that. There is that kind of extension of the uh, of the subjects to incorporate that vocational piece. Absolutely. And it makes students cheerful to be able to get out and do slightly different things away from the classroom. Um, PE and health helps them to be healthy and active. We also have other aspects such as learning a language. And actually, during lockdown, those subjects were really important. We all heard about everybody, you know, getting up in the morning with Joe Wicks and then baking <laughs> until they yeah. had no more baking left in them. So those <coughs> subjects are really important in preparing students for those things that they wouldn't normally do so yeah and, yeah I, I think they're incredibly important yeah absolutely and I, I couldn't agree more I think we, we everyone realized the value of kind of culture and art and exercise and 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 kind of all these peripheral which which might not have been seen as the core academics but were incredibly valuable during the lockdown period I couldn't agree more so tell me about the support that's offered to uh, you know children to develop these practical skills how, how how you know how do you take a child and how do you turn them into an artist how do you turn them in you know into a into a baker <laughs> Well, first of all, we, ha we are incredibly well resourced at the school, so we have fantastic specialist rooms and specialist teachers. And we make sure that we develop our curriculum in the real world, so everything kind of has a real world perspective. Um, so there's something to relate that activity to and those skills. Um, in DT specifically, we, we, um, we look at design as the main aspect, followed by making, so actually um, realising in the design that you've put together and then reviewing what you've done so far so those those that kind of cycle of, of design and make and review is is how we work on things we've got some fantastic rooms we've got great workshops we have fantastic IT suites here we've got um, a couple of food rooms for um, for sort of key stage three food through to hospitality and catering later on in in school life we've got textiles rooms um, so we're incredibly well resourced um, and that allows the students to make use of the correct equipment to be able to, um, to, you know, to use their skills and be able to develop them even further. 
Okay, that's fantastic. And um, and so you're probably going to be a little bit biased about this, but but tell me what's so good about devices teachers. Do you know what I was thinking about this and. Um... We have some incredibly experienced teachers, not just experienced at teaching, but teachers who've done other things before as well. So, for example, we have a teacher who used to be an artist in residence. We have teachers who used to be in the armed forces or the police force. We've got teachers who've worked in fashion design. Um, the head of our Kappa faculty um, actually has his own business running a very well-respected theatre company. So our students in drama are able to also join his theatre company. We put on fantastic professional level shows that are you know, really well received and, 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 and actually you know, are very professional. So it's, it's not like a school play, it's like a, a really professional production. So students have the opportunity to, to join in with that. Um, that kind of real life aspect of things as well. In addition, we also invite other people in. So we don't just have um, our teachers, but we try and engage people from outside the school as well to help support the learning of others. So we'll have experts in their field who come in to speak or more recently um, have, have dialed in on teams to be able to support our students. And that gives them um, the experience of not just teachers, but other people in the real world as well. So my daughter definitely needs motivating, you know, and, and sometimes people say it's because she's really clever. I think sometimes it's because she's lazy. You know, we could argue all about it. Today. But how tell me tell me about Devizer School and how they incentivize and reward students for kind of, you know, good behavior, doing well, achieving, working hard. Well, we have praise points. So um, our teachers are really ready to praise students, to give them praise points. We're ambitious for all. And actually, you know, as teachers, we, we tend to work together to try and improve our practice all the time. So we, we, you know, we watch each other and support each other, give each other advice, try to collaborate in our planning. And that allows for students to be successful. And when they are successful, we acknowledge that. In addition to praise points that uh, you can probably see behind me, the, um, the, the praise points for the different right. houses totting up there, there is a competition element. Um, and also, um, at the end of year um, celebrations, we will have the house points um, given out to students, but also students have the opportunity to be in a draw to win some real prizes and prizes that can be useful to them, like you know Amazon vouchers and, and so on and so forth. So they, they really have the opportunity to win, um, win on all levels. And it reminds me actually the, um, the end of term celebration that we have. I remember there was a, a quite a quiet year seven um, girl a few years ago um, and I remember the end of year celebration being absolutely blown away when she did a solo on the quad, a solo sing. And the, the, the voice that came out of this young girl, I mean, I, I didn't know this student, but the voice that came out of her was absolutely incredible. So to be able to put those skills and that confidence that she'd learned within Devizes School during her first year, to be able to stand up in front of the whole school and do a solo and receive her praise and her awards was absolutely fantastic. That is, that is fantastic. I know I certainly wouldn't have the courage to do anything like that. Maybe you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> certainly. Well, listen, Rachel, that, it's been lovely to meet you this evening. Thank you very much for giving us just a bit of an insight into the TED faculty and the surrounding groups as well. And uh, a really, really good understanding of what's going on at Devices School. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks. Right. For our audience, um, thank you very much for those of, the, of you that have actually put some questions forward and appreciate uh, you taking there. Um, um, uh, and what we will do um, so that, you know, this is accessible to some of us, some people who couldn't make it this evening. We will make this available up online for you to be able to download and watch and the rerun. And I know a couple of people mentioned about the sound and um, we will we'll update that uh, and make sure that that's enhanced so that, you you, you know, you've got proper audio quality if you haven't if you missed some of the bits this evening but for the rest of you that are all right we really appreciate um you you staying with us so um julian 
Thank you very much for coming back. We've got we've we've got some questions. We've got quite a lot of questions. Right. So I will I will pick uh, I will pick some that we can answer this evening. But I'm conscious of time, and um, so we we won't be able to get through all. But um, what we will do, Julian, if it's all right with you, we'll try and make some of this information available online or through the school website. Yeah. And I know your team will be following up with people accordingly. So for those parents that want to be shown round the school, you know. Obviously, we're trying to do this this evening so because there are restrictions and there will be parents that have probably already seen around the school. But if somebody's coming outside of area, they're coming in, they don't know about devices school. What are the opportunities to see a bit more around uh, around the school? We can. We will work. Our priority is safety, but we can work flexibly with people after after hours um, to make sure, especially if people are coming out of area and need to see that, we can facilitate that safely in a, in a COVID safe way. That, 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 that's really, really important. Um, and we can, we, can, we can share extra information that people need as well. And the, the other thing is that we're, 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 all, we're all directly contactable and we're all responsive. So any questions, because we know we can convey a certain amount doing this this evening, but it's limited time. And there's, there's other questions that we can't answer and we'll make sure that we give answers to any questions that people have. So they've got, because it is about making that informed choice, isn't it? So we'll make sure we do that. Yeah, absolutely. I, and there's a button at the bottom of the screen for the audience this evening. If you click that, learn more about admissions at Devices School. I know that will take you to the admissions page on the actual um, school website where they, we, we, we put together a short video of a kind of just a tour of the school, which people can see, but doesn't really do it justice because it is a, uh, I've been to Devices School a couple of times, it is a beautiful kind of school. Uh, uh, and uh, so, you know, opportunities to see it would be lovely. Talk to me about managing student behaviour and, and, and what's, you know, what's the process for that? How, how do you manage student behaviour? For, for us, learning, learning can't take place and people can't thrive unless there's a really well-established and clear set of parameters in which youngsters learn. We, we operate a, a system we call DFL, Disruption Free Learning. Um, it's, that's a really important piece of our school. It's the bedrock of what we do. It's about very clear consequences. Um, and very clear sanction for, for people who, who, who step outside agreed, really fair rules. That, the significant majority of, um, of, of youngsters don't fall foul of that system. Our, our system balances itself between reward and sanction, with reward being the, the, sort, of, um, the, the sort of real focus. But the, the structure of DFL, disruption-free learning for us, is really, really important. We want uh, classrooms to thrive, and they only thrive um, where teachers can teach and, and students can learn. So for us, we, we, are, um, we are about engaging young people, but we do have really clear expectations of young people. We have clear boundaries and, and clear rules. We also have clear support for people that find, find that more challenging. But sc schools thrive and young people thrive when there are really clear expectations. Um, so we are very clear in, in what we expect. We have really high standards of behaviour, really high standards of uniform. Um, as I've said before, I've got, I've got young, I've got children myself, and we sort of implement what I'd expect my young children to have as well, which is really clear standards and, and high expectations. The reward, for, the reward aspect for us is really important, but, but, but so too are people understanding the, the rules. I mean, I, I must say that the, the structure over the past um, few weeks since we've come back in September has been different because we're operating in bubbles. We operate in quite a regimented way because we have to be COVID safe. Um, but we've used that to our advantage to make sure that young people are prepared for the next lesson. So we're really well structured. So there's clear systems in place. Um, and that's about making sure that sort of behaviour platform is, is, is really secure. It's, it's the fundamental basis of, of, of schools doing well and young people thriving. So it's re that's, that's, really, that's really important, Wayne. So just on that point, you, you mentioned about how you're managing the school under such, you know, un, under these circumstances. Just how's that going? You know, how are the staff coping? How are the students coping? They're, they're all coping brilliantly. I mean, the one, one thing to say is one of our unique set points, I think, is that we're part of a much wider family of schools. We're part of the White Horse Federation. We're part of a big family of 32 schools, which gives us access to a whole range of different um, areas of expertise. As a, as a standalone, and I have been a standalone head previously, I, had to, I was in charge of HR, in charge of premises, IT, all those sorts of things, but we have dedicated professionals who, who support us in that, and health and safety is no exception. So we have the best support and guidance to help us, you know, steer us through those, this, this sort of really challenging time. Um, but we also, we, we're also really sort of reflective and thoughtful about what we do. 
I talk to staff a lot about being safer uh, tomorrow than we are today. And we've, we've, we look at what we do and make it better and refine it and, and, and make sure we're safer. Um, because once we've sorted that and we can, um, we can be confident that we're as safe as we can be, we can focus on classroom practice. But the reality is it's been really tricky because I can't stand in front of all the staff. I've had to deliver virtual assemblies, virtual messages to people. We're doing this virtually. Um, I've, you know, for 25 years, I've stood in a room and talked to people. So doing it like this is more challenging, but it's also a real opportunity. I think we'll learn a lot from this. I don't think we'll ever, um, we'll ever go back to lots of the ways that we did things. Sorry to say this to any students listening, but I think we'll never have a snow day again. <laughs> I think we've, developed, we've developed remote learning in a way that's um, going to allow us to, to work in innovative and creative ways. That's really important to us. Yeah. Um, so I think... Th th Never waste a good crisis. I think we've got to use this crisis to our sort of uh, our advantage and the advantage of our young people, really, so they can thrive. Absolutely. And um, can you talk, tell me a little bit more? We've got a couple of questions about your SEN provision yeah. and uh, you, you know your your approach to students that might have kind of uh, ADHD or any other basically uh, special educational needs. Can you talk about how you go about managing that and yeah. what the provision available is? I think that's that's that, that's part of that understanding of understanding the child in, in in their entirety. Really, we've got a really dedicated specialist SEN team. Um, and I think we talked a bit earlier about Dad Madbourne and his team. Who are, it's, it's really well resourced. Um, they're, they're, they're experts in their field. Um, and we, we use a whole range of different experts to sort of support us in it. We have a specific facility uh, on site to sort of work and sort of and foster um, sort of um, individual needs for people. And we have people with a whole range of different needs. And that's right the way through the whole um, spectrum of, of needs, in, inclu including the, the sort of uh, the, the, the brightest, the brightest in, in, in the land and, 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 and people who find learning really tricky. And we, we have a very clear view that every, everybody's real skills and abilities um, and we, our job is to nurture those skills and abilities irrespective of what they are. So we have a really clear sort of support mechanism. We have, um, we have, a, we have a, a big team, a well-resourced team who have access to a wide range of um, a, a wide range of external expertise as well. Um, we're, lu we're lucky that we have a really experienced staff here. Uh, the, the, the staff have a range of different skills, but they are really experienced and they know the community, know, know the young people in, in this school uh, and serve them well. Okay. Um, something a bit more practical. How do you how do you pick the houses <laughs> students go in? <laughs> just like just like everything we do, really, it, 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 it's it's about engagement with young people, and the, the process we use is just about student voice, really, making sure that young people um, have a have a, 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 a say in a say in, in what goes on. I think that's that, that's really important. Whatever you ultimately, the, the school this school belongs to the students who go to this school. So it is a, it's, a place, it's a place of work for, for, for all of us. And we're, we're lucky that we do something that we love and we have a passion for. So we feel, we, we don't feel that this is, we genuinely don't feel this is, this is, this is work. We enjoy what we do. But it, but it, but it is, it is a, a, a place that belongs to our young people. And that's, that's the fundamental bit. So everything we do must be with the best interests of, in, of them in heart. I say to every person that I speak to, to that deals with, with young people, that if you make the decision based upon what's right for the young people that you serve, you'll, you'll make the right decision. If you make it for any other reason, then you won't. So we have, we have a, it's, it, it's both simple and complex, isn't it? Whatever we do, if we put the learners at the center of that, that's really important. And the same is true of any choice we make around school. Um, we've got to involve them, involve them in that sort of process. Um, that's really important. So, um... Thank you very much, Julian. You know, really appreciate you taking time to answer some of those questions. Obviously, we couldn't get through to all of them that were asked this evening, but we'll try and we'll try and share some responses um, with our audience. D was there anything else you wanted to say to our audience this evening before we wrap this up? I, I, I think one of the things I want to say is just our our job as educators, because it is a it is a rewarding job, but there is over and above everything else that we do, there is a, there there is a job that we've got, and there's a it's sort of there's, an, there's a, a wiser person than me once told me a story. That if, you, if you take a jar and you put a flea in that jar, the, the flea can jump many, many times greater than its height, and that flea can jump out of that jar, and it will do so repeatedly. If we then put a lid on that jar, the, the flea will jump up, and it'll hit the top of that jar and, and not be able to jump out. It'll repeatedly jump up and repeatedly hit the jar. Over time, if you take the lid off that jar, the flea will stop jumping. 
It'll have learnt that it can't jump out of the jar, even though it could. We have to be really careful as educators to make sure that we don't put the lid on that jar of that young person's ambition. Our job is to remove that lid and to make sure that our young people have all sorts of ambitions. There is no reason in Devizes School in Sixth Form that we can't have the, cure, the next cure for cancer. Why can't we? We've got a fantastic body of young people and we should allow them to realise their ambition, whatever that is. So I think over and above lots of the things we talk about in the provision that we give, that, that ethos is fundamentally important and that ambition and drive to make a fantastic contribution to this great world that we live in is really important and that's our job, that's our job. And that's a good point to leave that there for this evening. Okay. Julian, wonderful to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time, for all, all, your, all your team this evening. Really appreciate everything that you've you know, shared with us tonight. Um, and thank you this evening for this evening's audience and your questions. Um, as I mentioned, there's a link there. You can go and find out more information about Devices School. You can check out the school website for further information. And I know uh, members of the uh, Devices School team will be in touch in, in the coming days and weeks, really just to, to kind of offer any more information or support needed or answer any questions. So once again, thank you very much, Julian. Really appreciate your time. And have a, to our audience. There, thank, have a great evening. Yeah, thank you.